let's just be friendly. Greatest contact. A single bogey and it's nearly on top of us. Identify. No transponders, no recognition codes. Uh, it has to be a silent raider. Okay, so this is a first test, a very first test of my Mobius action camera. Uh, this is set at 2K resolution, and I have no idea if this is in focus yet or not. There may be some things that I'm working on. The desk is totally a mess as we've been going through this. So what I am working on is the um, Mobius kit for the TOS Battlestar Galactica. I've already put photo etch into the uh, cockpit and uh, primed that. Now I'm going to put a coat of paint on that for the first time. That's my first time working with photo etch and then I'll have the um, panels that go behind these pieces here. Had to route those out a little larger and then uh, I'll put lighting behind that. Uh, so far what I've got in place is uh, uh, landing gear and I have routed uh, through the landing gear two sets of power uh, because I'm going to have two circuits that I'm going to put in the base here and there's actually a set of um, uh, small tiny little lights right there in the uh, SMDs right there in the front landing gear for uh, landing lights right now it's just mocked up uh, just kind of put together for the very first time See everything's moving and, and so forth. Um, the only thing I've glued is uh, the engine housing here in the back. The rest is all friction fit. So what we're going to do for a little bit here is um, actually test to see if we can put together um, the uh, lights for the three engines. So that's probably the next uh, piece of work that I have to do. So right now I'm going to just disassemble this and pull that to the side, let that sit and ruminate for a moment, and then the back comes off, and then finally let's pop off the uh, front engine intakes, and uh, these are in as friction fit. Uh, what I did is wired those through the landing gear. There's a real, real thin piece right there that I had to um, gouge out from the inside with uh, a little sanding stone. Uh, and uh, then just fed some magnet wire and there's feeder wire to hold that right now. And uh, one circuit for the uh, uh, landing lights and one circuit for uh, landing lights and cockpit and one circuit for the engines. So that's kind of the goal. This is uh, glued together at uh, the moment, but uh, as I'm sure you've seen on other videos, uh, I'm sure you've seen that uh, there is... Uh, a way that they actually run uh, styrene. I've got rod for that uh, from side to side here in order to mount uh, the uh, engines on that or the lights on that. So I'll do one that way, one that way, and uh, hopefully that will uh, will get us there. So that's what I'm going to work on for a minute or two here as I start the light process. And so what I'll do is uh, mark that. And I'll be right back after doing some cutting on this. Okay, so what uh, you see here is I've, uh, following the direction of Interstellar Modeler on YouTube, is I put a couple of styrene rods uh, as cross members in here. And uh, one of the things that I did was actually um, tried to make sure that I offset those so that uh, when you put your bulbs in and glue, ha one, you would have a place to glue to, and two, uh, they'll be centered in the actual model. I don't know if I can fit this length in here. Yeah, there's a good example. So if I'd have been in the center, the bulb would have been uh, off center, but this way I can glue to that uh, styrene support and uh, put a model there and kind of back that off again to get some diffusion away from the uh, hot spots in the engines. Uh, these are little uh, yellow 
uh, warm white, frankly, um, uh, three millimeter bulbs, but I'm going to use uh, five millimeter flickering blues in there and get those wired up. So these are for the cockpit right there. We'll be back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so what I've done is my preliminary windings on uh, the five millimeter flickering blue LEDs uh, wired in a hundred ohm resistor and uh, black and white wire. This is 30 gauge uh, wire, so I've got three of those wired up. And uh, what will happen is, is that uh, once those are, are soldered, which I'm getting the soldering iron warmed up, I'll be able to add those in uh, with some glue and uh, make sure I put some shrink wrap. And then we'll see how that looks. I'll be back. All right, so I am not uh, any bit of a solder whatsoever. I've only been soldering for a couple of weeks. And uh, so I'm learning to set my wires and to not only set my wires but uh, I learned that I had to shorten them up significantly I was leaving the entire length of the resistor on the front end the, the back side and uh, it was just uh, my bulbs or my my lights were getting so long and and that in some of these tight spaces you just simply couldn't work through that so um, just getting an idea of how to solder here is uh, one that's new and uh, quite honestly it's kind of fun except for all the smoke that you inhale when you're you're breathing through some of this stuff so that is uh, kind of two of those done uh, just showing you here the third oh see that's why again I'm not uh, a fantastic solderer learning to do some of this stuff but uh, uh, having shortened up that Piece over here just a series of quick windings hopefully and then back into the helping hand a little bit of a tin or solder on the tip here to tin that up and then on to the actual wire itself resistor to the bulb, again using the longer portion of the anode or the bulb side, and then finally the negative or the ground, letting that solder flow. Okay, so that is uh, my basic uh, soldering technique which is very sloppy uh, compared to the pros out there uh, but uh, it seems to be working. I'll be back. Uh, welcome back. Uh, so I finished uh, soldering up this circuit here for the uh, three engines. Uh, essentially this is the way that they'll go in and uh, then the two leads off of it. So I've wired them in parallel and uh, we're going to uh, test them out to see how they look uh, after the soldering is done and uh, looks like we've got some flickering going and essentially what you're going to see is that uh, these bulbs will uh, be much closer to that kind of look actually that kind of look uh, as we go so if the camera can see that let's just make sure we get that into camera and uh, I think that that's going to look pretty good once it's in glued up and, uh, and put in place so the next step I now have all the lighting done uh, the next step is to um, go ahead and light block all the assemblies now and then uh, glue the lights in and uh, start assembling uh, uh, from that stage so well, on to the next thing Okay, uh, so what you're looking at is the top fin, uh, stabilizer fin for the uh, Mobius 132nd kit for the original series Viper. Uh, what that is right there is a one uh, SMD, surface mounted diode. Uh, it's already been pre-wired. I got these off of Amazon. 
And uh, essentially what I'm doing is just putting a quick anti-collision light uh, in the top of the Mobius Viper. You can see how absolutely bright that... Oh! And four and a half watts kills it. Uh, smoked it right out. So I'm going to pull that one and put uh, a resistor on there so that uh, I can uh, do a different one. So we'll come back to you. Right then, fair enough. Lesson learned. Uh, the tiny little SMDs uh, do require do require a do require a resistor. And uh, so now that I've got that installed and soldered in, if we uh, add up to our little tail unit here, we'll put uh, my positive lead. And this is just running four and a half volts, so I, I'm, I'm not surprised it blew it out, but it did blow it out. And uh, now with four and a half volt, um, teeny, teeny, tiny wires. I bet you that's like 40 gauge all up. There we go. So, oh. let's see if we can get it to connect here. Ah, maybe that's it. So, uh, just waiting for the super glue to dry there and uh, uh, once that's dry, then I can actually add the cover piece to it, like so. And that should give me a very white, very bright, very bright uh, tail navigation light. Uh, could make it into a strobe if I run that circuit down through, and I just might. I think that would be very cool. Um, but uh, for now, that's what that white light looks like at the top. And uh, what I'll do is put uh, a drop of um, liquid mask over that. And uh, then I'll be able to prime and paint all of this and make that work. No we'll use the light bleed block in here. Uh, first of all, it's not bleeding in. Secondly, that's exposed out on top uh, outside of the light. And... Uh, I'm actually pretty pleased with the way that looks. Really bright. Maybe I should move up to a... Uh, that's a 300-ohm resistor. Maybe I should move up to like a 700-ohm resistor. Or even a 1,000, a 1K resistor might uh, bring that down a little bit. Uh, but, on the other hand, if I want that to strobe, uh, that would look really, really slick uh, watching that fire up. So, we'll go from there. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. So, uh, what we've got uh, here is our tailpiece. And uh, we've mounted a teeny 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 tiny uh, 0402 SMD into the tailpiece there and what that allow me to do is uh, set that as a strobe circuit and uh, I have uh, have the ability to glue that um, glue that in now the super glue is done and uh, boy you can really see that spark. I'm gonna have to break that down to uh, a 1k resistor uh, however once it's in place and uh, put onto the back of the engine mount kit you can see that it's going to uh, really set that off uh, hopefully make that look like it's uh, uh, a strobe or navigation light on the uh, back of the uh, the Viper here so now the next step I have is I'm going to light block the entire interior here uh, of that I've got a light block uh, the interior here on uh, uh, those particular units uh, especially around the cockpit and uh, no reason to light block anything else there and once the light blocking is done uh, then we can start uh, assembling this putting it together and starting the paint process uh, I've watched uh, uh, a myriad of videos uh, I have to give shout outs to uh, Interstellar Modeler, uh, Boyd at Trekworks um, Demco Model Works, uh, Simon Merckx got me started watching all this stuff and it's like, okay, I think I can have a little fun doing that, not near the quality of any of those guys. And uh, my absolute hero, uh, not only because of his modeling skill set, but uh, uh, the fun of his videos and uh, the uh, joy with which he does modeling is uh, Lou Damaso as Tech Dummy. Uh, he just is, uh, uh, I'm on his video speed at Friday when he uploads it. 
and uh, you know that's just a real joy to watch him work and uh, watch him uh, problem solve, which he does a, a significant amount of, and uh, I, and I'm just thrilled watching uh, him work and, and watching ideas. So uh, I will uh, lift liberally from his uh, uh, program. But one of the things that he and I do differently, and his results are many times better uh, with his mask capability and so forth on paint. I actually will uh, will will paint pre-paint some of this stuff as far as the sub-assemblies, but uh, I prefer to uh, to to use um, uh, to to assemble and then uh, uh, prime and go from there. So we'll see how that proceeds uh, on the, the paint process here and the weathering and so forth. Uh, I'm not a, a, a capable of doing the weathering yet uh, with any skill. So uh, uh, being uh, kind of new to the modeling process there, but uh, I do like, uh, frankly, I like to look pristine kits. So uh, anyway, this has uh, been a fun test today of our new camera system, and uh, hopefully that will work out. Um, and then um, we will continue to, uh, to make progress on... It's time to uh, finally move into the cockpit here with the photo etch background. I spent quite a bit of time actually uh, routing this out, trying to get this to fit, and of course it doesn't out of the gate, so it's going to take quite a bit of trimming, and because um, I'm not going to work on the plastic anymore, so we'll have to see if we can't get this to fit, and uh, hopefully it will. If not, we'll work on it just a little bit more and see what uh, we can do to make this stick. So, not having done this before, I'm really kind of at a loss as to how large to make it. Fortunately there are four others of these to fix and apply under the back wrap drop here so hopefully this will fit in in some way shape fashion or form. Just looking where I've got to trim off here. Painted the cockpit with uh, Tamiya um, metallic gray and then um, the seat is a burnt sienna so it's close to leather kind of what they had at the uh, the program there so let's see if we're any progress here This is the largest one, and if this one is this tough, the rest of these are not going to be fun to do. Not going to be fun to do. So I need to notch that just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is square this up here. I think what I'll do besides just using a, uh, the plastic here or the inserts, I'm also going to um, paint some of the dials on the front, on the face, even though they're not going to be lit that way. Uh, they're still going to have uh, color and uh, respond to the ambient light. And uh, hopefully that will get us uh, at least uh, somewhere along the line, get us there. And I think this is starting to go. We're almost in. Parts have all been washed now, ready for uh, ready to.
to um, primer and light block. That's kind of the next step after uh, this is done here. Okay, so that piece is in. I don't think I'm really happy with that. Uh, especially with these down here, these two in the bottom. But they really don't have anything that blocks those whatsoever. But let's just see what uh, we can do here with some of the other ones. Maybe we can get this to fit. And if nothing else, I can put something in another piece in behind that, that last section there. Oh yeah, this is going to be super, super tight. So what I'm going to do is cut this off at the dial here, and spin this around and cut this off at the dial there. And while we're at it, I bet you I'm going to have to do right across the top of these. see if that will actually fit. Well, so that's not so bad. And I think what I'm going to do is take these two pieces here off of this extra one and see if we can't slot it in behind here. Uh, that's going to be really super tight, but let's see what, what happens when we just put it into play right there. So maybe we've got to do this a little differently. I think if I take it and cut out the text, runaway mission, and cut out the text on this side. And I might have a bit too much right there. So now that in behind here and then take this one and lay it in there so I think what I'll do next is take some canopy glue Tack all of those in just a skosh. Get my right canopy glue here. Just a skosh into those so that they don't uh, they don't fall out. slide this one right back into shape. Of course there's always one that wants to not play nice. Actually I'm going to rotate, rotate that 90, 90 degrees, get that text out over under the... It's not text actually, it's a bar graph. Okay. So with that I think the front it is covered. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right with that. So we're going to continue on and uh, add some additional pieces to the um, add some additional pieces here to the sides and continue with the photo etch. <laughs> 